So we find ourselves asking this question a lot of ourselves, is this the right move? Am I going the correct way bullish? Am I going the correct way right bearish? Am I basically fighting the market? It's all these questions that we ask ourselves day in and day out as traders, as investors. Are we on the right side of history? And the thing is, it's pretty hard to understand emotionally if we're on the right side of history. Today, we're gonna to be trying to dissect that quotum and basically figure out, hey, what are some methods we can use to know if we're on the right side of history? What are some of the indicators we can use on the right side of history? And really simplifying it down to very basics so you guys can understand if we're on the right side or wrong side, how you can tell, and if you're being emotional, right? So looking at the markets, they have had an amazing run, right? That's undeniable. But the question is, how long can they go, right? We're, how long can we keep going? Well, it's really, really simple, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about this on the Weekend Deep Dive. Link down in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Give out all the levels we're going to give out in this video. I've been trading the markets for over six years now, basically being profitable every single year. I bring you videos about options and also the levels in the market. We give these things out for free. If you guys want to learn more and interact with us, link in the description is also the Discord link. And if you guys are down there, check out the subscribe button. Feel free to press it. It's not an obligation. But go into the market, right? Simply put, the chart is your friend to the end, and it's going to tell you where you need to be. As simple as that can be, the charts are going to tell you where you need to be. You do not need an analyst, and we'll get into this exactly. We're going to cover Tesla as well, right? You do not need an analyst to tell you eight to four possibility of being bullish or bearish, right? Right over here. And simply put, it is that you don't need this. You don't simply need this to know if you need to be bullish or bearish. We'll get into Tesla in just a moment, and I'll explain why you don't need this. So going back to this markets, right? We went over the weekend deep dive of these levels. It was looking absolutely bearish. I played a bearish trade last night and it was very profitable, right? It hit all the profit targets, hit uh, POC, hit value area high. It was wonderful. Woke up, profit in my account. I didn't even trade today just because I didn't want to deal with the chop. Could have made some more money if we took that full rotation to the downside. But I said, I don't want to take bearish trades are very long in this market, especially with how the market is very fervent. It's very, looking for that rally mentality. It has not died. Again, going back to the fear and greed index, this has been a strong indication, I said on the weekend deep dive, of where the sentiment is. As much as people are gonna slap it and say, hey, it's just a fool's errand, it has been one of the best indicators to know if you need to be bull side or bear side the market. Same way with net speculative positions. This is somewhat like a tangent, right? Of the, the bears may be getting excited around here. And this could be shifting those net speculative positions. So it's going to be very interesting heading into the rest of the week. We really don't have a lot of sentiment news to push us one way or another. So let we have to refer back to the key levels of the video. And we simply put the 90 moving average and the NASDAQ were going to be our two biggest uh, points of contention. So let's recap real quick what happened uh, yesterday, how we can profit off of it today, and where it could be sending the market, right? So yesterday, we basically got a rotation all the way down to 90 moving average. We even got a rotation to 580, almost with the low of the day basically being 580.60, right? So that, that was basically our low of the day. It went in 30 cents of our striking distance of the rotationary point. I said accumulate bullish up until that point. If we are in the same area today, i definitely be looking at bullish accumulation versus bearish breakdown. For simply put, that's two days in a row that we did not meet the breakdown point of the market. If that's the case, then you know to be bullish the rest of the week, especially we're going into Tesla earnings. They're expected to be bearish. Why is that important? Well, if Tesla's expectations are bearish and it comes out with any form of good news, we saw with JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, what happens if like expectations are levered up all the way over here, but essentially we get kind of like this right here, it results in a bullish tangent for the markets. And the thing is, this is gonna be where I get a little theory crafting. The Fed wants the market to crash. They need not want, they need to refinance their debt at a very, very low interest rate. And that's why they're going to keep cutting, right? Everyone that's expecting the Fed not to basically keep cutting through November, through December, they need cheap rates, right? That was the one pivotal thing in the markets. However, the election can influence various things. But the thing is, we don't care about the election. We only care about how to make money. And simply put, right now, bullish accumulation is the way to go. If we jump over to the NASDAQ and recap it for you, quickly here, we can clearly see that we caught all the bearish rotation. I was 
gonna say it was pretty bearish on the Nasdaq until it actually pushed back above that 494.47 level, closing above it and actually looking to challenge bullish territory futures as of last night. We're looking a bit bullish. However, they could have retraced a little bit into the open. However, above 494.47 opening would result in a bullish rotation in the market. We also saw VIX not really doing much today, right? We going jumping to the VIX. We're still below the 1933, which is the 200-day moving average. Sandwich move of the 50. Again, I expect a breakdown in the markets. And this is setting up a beautiful trade. It's setting up basically that weekly break, right, for the S&P. It's also setting up that weekly break for the NASDAQ. This is where I'd be leveraging in to put spreads, vertical put spreads, to basically count, uh, to take advantage of that IV contraction, the delta expansion in the markets. I do expect us to break above 586.12 as of the price action where the bears were not able successfully to push us down below. Simply put, if we're not two days in a row being able to push down below, that is setting up a perfect opportunity for accumulation and a future breakout, especially if Tesla comes in a little bit different than everyone's expecting. Again, the NASDAQ, if we're above 494.46, six, I'd be expecting a bullish rotation in the markets. I expect challenging 498, 498.83. I'd be expecting us to challenge that. So that basically means IV is going to contract, implied volatility is going to go down because of that. And thus, we're going to expect a contraction on IV, expansion of delta to the upside is going to take full advantage of the devaluation of those put contracts, especially when people are being greedy, right? They took some of their expectations off from the greediness. So again, going back to the markets, we took some breaks off and we're pushing higher. And we can also jump to the most riskiest assets, Bitcoin, right? Having a little bit stalled momentum here, however, not fully breaking down. We haven't seen Bitcoin completely break down. Now, if that's completely different at the point of which this video comes out, if we're below 66,171, obviously, then we're going to make a different tune. Make sure you guys tune into the live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern so you know when what's going on in the market. We'll be covering all this and more. And if you guys want, we can deep dive in our link description below so you guys can check out the exact levels, how to get it. I explain all this, even talk about option plays. But enough talking about the market, right? Tesla. Tesla, th this is where I say you don't need a crystal ball to basically say it's bearish or bullish. You can simply look at the charts. This is massively bearish. You, the stock is collapsing from where it has been, right? Down approximately 17% since the beginning of October, going into earnings, massive gap down. I don't know what to tell you guys. This is looking bearish. You do not need the expectations of some expert telling you 18 to 14 that the earnings are going to be bad. Now, what I say to counteract this is that a lot of that is being priced in. So you may not get a huge move to the downside. However, 201 expectation, right? That's going to be where we start looking at different price points. And let's actually jump over to Tesla's options just to see what we could possibly pick out for the earnings play. I'm definitely going to be sell side the market, and I'm going to show you guys an interesting option play that you can pretty much so jumping into the positions right here, we can clearly see Tesla's got a pretty nice expansive range for the options play. Necessarily because of the ability to go up, I wouldn't necessarily look at just pure bullish or bearish approach. I'd be looking to strangulate Tesla's price movement, especially with the stock has a very large implied volatility, but it's not expecting a large move, right? So I'd be basically selling the one standard deviation options, looking to sell the 237.50, basically, and also the 200, right? Constrained by those moving averages and giving me an interesting area for profit. Um, with this, we basically profiting $265. However, we would have to put up 20,000. So let's constrain some of that collateral that we wanna play. And I usually like doing a $10 wide spread, right? So it's gonna take away from some of that profit, but we don't have to really put up a large amount of collateral. And that $10 wide spread would give us a little bit, right? Put up $822, $178 profit for a standard iron condor. This is gonna actually increase as we head into earnings because the implied volatility is still gonna increase with Tesla. However, it's gonna completely shrink and it's a four day call. So you only have to do it for two days. You can still roll it. So this debt, whichever side comes into the money, for example, but you also have the ability to turn it into a uh, defend the trade for not a lot of losses, roll it. So there's a lot of optionality out there 
pun not intended there. However, I definitely be looking to constrain the price action for Tesla because there's a lot of jargon of like, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be bad. But right now there hasn't been a lot of movement from it. Uh, the stock has been significantly down going into earnings. So that's why I'm not necessarily just looking one directional. I like to be indirectionally um, partisan to it. And especially with the implied volatility not being like super expanded, it still has room to run. So it can basically stretch this out for about the same amount of premium. And again, you basically are playing one side of the transaction for free. If it moves against you, you still can then roll and adjust that positioning afterwards. So again, that's very, very easy to do. So an e amazing option play, right? Iron Condor on Tesla, especially for only a couple day hold, that will be very, very interesting to see. And especially as the implied volatility evolves as we head into earnings, I'll keep you guys appraised of how that trade goes. And simply put, again, Tesla, that 2-1 that protects you against that 200 going in the money, and that 237, right, is that 200 day and 50 day are all defending against there. It's also the gap fill. I don't expect it to completely fill that gap going into earnings. I expect maybe if you get a bullish appreciation, you get some of that gap fill, but you don't get all the way. And then subsequently a drop down, right? So it kind of gives you this barrier perfectly of 236 to 201 being your price action. You can even go out further in time in order to catch more of that theta. If you're not comfortable necessarily holding a short duration option, you could do that as a constrained play, especially with implied volatility being expanded. You won't make as much premium, right? Because the theta is maximized as it's closer to expiration. However, it's a wonderful option play out there. Again, if you guys have more questions, make sure you guys stop by the stream 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. I got the weekend deep dive queued up over here for you guys so you can go check that out as well. To know what the levels are, our own thoughts and more in-depth details of what we see threatening the market, what we see bullish for the market, our theories as well. We talk about the yield curve, key levels, VIX, Bitcoin, everything in that video. So make sure you guys check it out over there. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the live stream tonight.